again. But Felix Baumgartner will eventually try to become the first man to leap at supersonic speeds on Sunday. The Daredevil wants to break the record for the highest free fall, jumping from, get this, 23 miles above the earth. But what can jumping from that height and at that speed really do to Baumgartner's body? Well, joining me now on Good Day is Jason Kring, a professor at Emory Riddle Aeronautical University. Good morning. Thank you for coming in. Good morning. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Now, I'm super excited to see this jump, but it scares me a little. What can happen? I mean, 23 miles above the earth is pretty high. Right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, 120,000 feet. Uh, the thing will be over, the entire jump will be over in about five or six minutes. That's as long is, as it takes, is, huh? Which is remarkable. And uh, according to their estimates, after about 40 seconds, you'll reach Mach 1, the speed of sound. And, uh, and that's kind of where the unknowns are here. We're not yeah. sure if he will create kind of a sonic boom, kind of like we're familiar with here uh -huh. with the space shuttle. So that's kind of the big unknown here. But uh, what is well known is the technology of a spacesuit, okay. uh, which in essence is the same kind of technology we've used during the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo programs, and the same kind of suit that the astronauts have aboard the space station today. So the technology is relatively safe, uh, and he actually has some additional kind of safety devices built in in case he gets into, for example, an uncontrolled spin, okay. which is a, is, a, is a major concern. What is on the suit to help him with that? Well, it's kind of a device that would detect G-forces. Okay. So if he gets into a spin, uh, it would create negative G-forces, which is the kind that we experience when you're on a roller coaster uh -huh. and you go over the top and you're kind of being pulled down. So the suit would detect that G-force and release a small parachute, which kind of help stabilize that spin. Okay. So even if he were to lose consciousness, which would be a possibility if he went into that spin, the suit would kind of protect him. So is this something he has been training for? Can you train for something like this? Do you go up to 15 miles above the earth and right. then 20, something like that? Right. Well, he's definitely has done a lot of uh, uh, training flights or training jumps, if you will. Uh, and also Felix Baumgartner is, is kind of a daredevil in the sense that he's done many of these kinds of activities before, base jumping, jumping off of you know, radio towers and such. So he's definitely practiced this. They've got a couple uh, practice flights uh, already under their belt. And so now it's just going to this elevation, this altitude for the, uh, for, the, for the major jump. Yeah, it's been delayed several times. I think the first jump was going to be Monday, then Tuesday. Talk to us about the conditions that there needs to be 23 miles up in order for this jump to happen. Right. Well, number, the number one concern is the wind, of course. And that's what's been, uh, I think, behind the delays for the last several days. You want to have ideal wind conditions. So if he's pushed off course significantly, um, number one, that could place him in a, in, a, in a position where the crews can't get to him for safety. Um, but the other concern is if you have a high wind, that spin that, that I was mentioning could be a, a bigger problem. And so if you've got wind that's not allowing him to maintain the proper orientation, that could be a significant concern. So they want to make sure the wind um, conditions are just right. Uh, as well as that he'll land kind of near his support crew on the ground. All right, Jason Kring from Emory-Riddle University, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you very it much. It was a pleasure. Thank you. All right, John, let's send it back to you. All right, still ahead on.